Telugu, Tamil and Kannada. Today, these three languages have got three different states. And each language is thriving on its own. But 500 years ago, there was only one emperor ruling all the three linguistic divisions. So, how the language barriers have been bridged by the then emperors. We can know about this aspect more clearly from none other than the great Sri Krishnaraya himself. How do we know the linguistic unity in diversity achieved by Sri Krishna Devaraya 500 years ago? For that, we have to travel into the world of inscriptions. Join me and let us take our journey forward into the world of inscriptions. During the reign of Krishna Devaraya, the Vijayanagara Empire was at its zenith. It was spread across the present day Karnataka, Andhra, and Tamil Nadu. It had sway over some parts of Telangana and Kerala. Sri Lanka, too, was under Vijayanagara's overlordship. Having such vast dominion under its umbrella, the linguistic landscape of Vijayanagara was as diversified as it is in our times. Today, the language wars have become the fault lines to divide the people. Such a situation naturally gives way to a pertinent question on the history of languages. And that question is, how the then monarchs of Vijayanagara handled the sensitive and sentimental diversity of languages? To find answers to this question, the Tirumala inscriptions of Krishnadevaraya serve as useful pointers. Before examining the Tirumala inscriptions of Krishnaraya, let us take a look at his literary works to know his linguistic capabilities. A Telugu poem from Krishnaraya's Amukta Malyada Kavya, the literary works authored by the emperor can be known. All these treatises were written in Samskrita, proving that Krishnaraya was quite proficient in Samskrita and lenient towards writing in that language only. His only work in Prakruta, Amukta Malyada, comes in Telugu language. This Kavya of Krishnaraya is considered as one of the all-time best poetical compositions of Telugu. Thus, Krishnaraya held Samskrita and Prakrita languages very close to his heart. His dexterity in Samskrita and Telugu and his patronage of other languages are well supported by his inscriptions. The multilingual inscriptions of Krishnaraya are not limited to Tirumala temple alone. They can also be found in Kanchi, Kalahasti and other major temples across South India. Such was the piety of Krishnaraya towards languages. There are 28 inscriptions in Tirumala and Tirupati temples that have been issued by the Emperor Krishnaraya himself. 
From 1509 AD to 1521 AD, Krishnaraya visited Tirumala Temple seven times. Every visit of him is attested by a number of inscriptions. In addition to these inscriptions of the Emperor, there are 26 inscriptions issued by his wives Chinna Devi and Tirumala Devi. These inscriptions not only give us the details of the linguistic aspects but also talk about the charities made by the donors. They also provide other insights such as genealogy, chronology of events and other such data of historical importance. From this point of view, the Tirumala inscriptions of Krishnaraya throw much light on his language policy that he used to unite the diversified language groups. The editor of the book Inscriptions of Krishnaraya's Time, Vijay Raghavacharya, opined that Krishnaraya recorded his inscriptions in Telugu, Tamil and Kannada languages with a purpose. He says that Krishnaraya wanted his citizens from Kannada, Tamil and Telugu speaking provinces to learn the details of his donations in their mother tongue. This is a clear indication that the Emperor of Vijayanagara has accorded equal respect to all the three prominent languages of his empire. The first ever inscription of Krishnaraya as an emperor was issued on 10th February 1513 AD. This inscription has been recorded in Telugu language. It was then promptly followed by Kannada and Tamil languages. While Telugu and Kannada inscriptions were found on the north wall of the first prakara, Tamil inscription was found on the south wall of the first prakara. A copy of these inscriptions was recorded in Nandinagari. This inscription has been put up on the inner right side wall of Padikavali Gopuram. On the whole, the first 20 inscriptions of Krishnaraya and his wives have been issued in four different languages. Six inscriptions in Telugu, six inscriptions in Tamil, four inscriptions in Kannada and four inscriptions in Nandinagari. Thus, we can understand that Krishnaraya has given equal importance to all the three major South Indian languages and has also paid respect to Samskrita as well. It must be observed that the inscriptions of great Telugu and Kannada poets Tarlapaka Annamacharya and Sri Vyasatirtha were recorded in Tamil language only. The inscriptions of the predecessors of Krishnaraya and his successors were mostly written in Tamil. From this point of view, the multilingual inscriptions of Krishnaraya stand out as testimonies for his linguistic policy that accorded equal status to Samskrita and Prakrita languages and attempted to bring unity in diversity. So, the linguistic analysis of Krishnaraya's inscriptions which have been inscribed in three languages indicates that Krishnaraya had lot of respect for Kannada which is his mother tongue, Telugu which is also like his mother tongue and then Tamil, the language in which the most revered Alvars have sung the glory of Narayana. Krishnaraya being a Kannadiga wrote about Goda Devi who hails from Tamil speaking area and he wrote her glory in the language of Telugu. This great assimilation of linguistic unity exhibited by Krishnaraya is not just political but his deep affection for all the three languages. I feel personally that we have to take a great lesson from 
the approach of krishna raya towards these three beautiful languages in today's environment where language is being used as a weapon to advance certain vested interests we must take a great lesson from krishna raya in achieving the linguistic unity though the languages are diversified i trust that this present episode of into the world of inscriptions became successful in unveiling the heart and mind of krishna devaraya the great who has shown the linguistic plurality in the most efficient way so let us take a pledge that we not only respect our mother tongue but we will hold equal respect for other languages also each language is like a flower with its own shape beauty and fragrance so with this we will conclude this episode of into the world of inscriptions and we will meet you soon with another interesting inscription till then take care and be safe namaste